the Lord put on my heart and said, don't pray for revival, pray for my presence. And that's exactly what we're going to do on today's Move Your Mountain. We're going to pursue his presence and you don't want to miss it. We're going to have anointed worship, the word, take holy communion and pray over your prayer requests today. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in Welcome everyone to Move Your Mountain. We're blessed and so grateful that you have taken time out to join us today. Pastor Myra Bell leading us in worship. I'm Pastor Gary Mitrick here with Pastor Rebecca Luker, Pastor Jonathan Schaefer. And as we pursue and go after the Lord's presence today, Worship plays such a significant part in that. It truly does, you know, and even hearing a song like that, because of who you are, when you start thinking about who God is and how awesome He is, how powerful He is, how He doesn't have to have His presence dwelling with us and being with, but He desires that. He Amen. loves having that relationship with us. And it should fill your heart to cause you to worship and press in. The more we think about the goodness of God, the more we should want to run after Him. Absolutely, and it's the, the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Right. It's this reality, this awareness that, that God does not have to be with us. He chooses That's to be right. with us. One of the things that echoes through the book of Revelation is how, and I will be with them and they will be my people and I will be their God. And so Amen. God's presence literally shifts the atmosphere. Things change and that's why we open with worship. That's why we get into the word because that's where we find the presence of God, most vibrant and, and, and awakens our heart to the reality that not only is God present, but he is there and he is able to help. Amen. Well, remember, if you need prayer for anything, anyone that's on your heart today, 
The number is there on your screen, 888-665-4483. After the prayer partner agrees with you, they're going to bring all the requests over to the altar where we will conclude our time together in prayer with you. We're also going to take Holy Communion together. So we want you to get your elements, a cracker or a piece of bread, some juice in a cup so that you can join and participate with us. Well, Pastor Meyer is going to come over and join us on the couch. We're going to get into a great story back in the book of Exodus, chapter 33. It says there in verse 7, Moses took his tent and he pitched it outside of the camp, far from the camp, and he called it the tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. And so it was that whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle, that all the people rose and each man stood at his tent door and he watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass that when Moses entered the tabernacle, that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshiped each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend, and he would return to the camp. But the servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man did not depart from the tabernacle. Oh, wow. What a powerful story. How Moses, just as the leader of the children of Israel, had such a desire to just want to pursue God's presence. You know, in, in the Gospel of John in the New Testament, the Bible says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word dwelt is the word tabernacle. It means to pitch a tent, to put the, the, the stakes down in the ground. God doesn't want a visitation. He wants a habitation. Number one, God desires to tabernacle with you and with me. I love that verse, uh, uh, verse 11, it says that God spoke face to face to, with him as a man speaks to his friend. And that's where God wants us to be so close to him and his tabernacling with us. I, th I think about one of your favorite scriptures, Psalm 91. Yes. He that dwells in that Come secret on. place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. God desires to be in you like that. He wants to have his way, wants you to trust him so much that you will just let him do what he wants to do. <laughs> and, and the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5 that we, our bodies, are earthly tents and mm -hmm. God wants to dwell inside of you. The question is, have you established your tent? I love how it said Moses went outside of the yeah. camp because Moses was the leader. And that's, that's oh. a fascinating thing too. Was, was Moses the leader because he met with God or because he met with God, Moses was able to lead. I think it's not either or, it's both and, but Moses, he got outside of all of the clamoring voices, mm -hmm. <clears throat> all of the voices Come of on. dissent, all of the other things that were demanding his attention. Yeah. And he said, I'm going to set up a place where I can meet with God. And it is so vital, it is so important 
to, to this reality that God wants to tabernacle with us. I believe God is waiting for us mm -hmm. to set up a tabernacle. Mm -hmm. He is. And mm -hmm. how often do we push him aside because we think we have things better to do in our lives. Mm -hmm. Time doesn't allow us to take that time, but he desires to have that time with you. He, mm -hmm. The God of the universe wants to spend time with you. And you know, just like Moses was that leader. Maybe you're the leader in your home and you're wondering why are things so chaotic in our family? Why is things seem just so out of hand? I can't control it. You're right. You can't. But God wants you to step up as that leader in your home. Maybe you're you're the wife in the family. And you're saying, but my husband doesn't love the Lord. Then you be that leader, just like Moses was and say, I'm going to make it a point. I need time with the Lord. If I'm going to lead my family, mm -hmm. if I'm going to lead those that are around me, I need time with the Lord. I know that he wants that relationship with me. I know he wants to dwell in me. So I will allow it to happen. You know, Moses had to go out. They had to go mm -hmm. out yeah. of the camp if they wanted mm -hmm. to see God at that moment before he would dwell with them. But then they did some things that they had to go out of the camp now to start seeing God. And so sometimes we have to make an effort to go and see yeah. God, to have God's presence, to make that time with him in our daily routine. Mm -hmm. Take that time today. You know, I'm thankful that you are watching today. I'm thankful that you've tuned in because maybe this is the message that you just need at this moment in your life to remind you, I need to get back to that relationship with the Lord that I had before that I got away from. God desires to have residence within you. Amen. And I love that when Moses went out into the tent, everybody rose and yes. worshiped. Mm -hmm. Oh, when you worship God, it invites, it puts out the welcome mat for the presence of yes, the Lord. And then I love it says that when, when Moses came back from the tent, Joshua Stay. stayed there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know how I could always tell in our services when the presence of the Lord begins to descend, people don't want to leave. Yeah, absolutely. Right. They just want to linger and stay. Yeah, especially, and I mean, Joshua represents the, the next generation. The, he was a young man, the scripture says. And I believe that this is something that's so vitally important that mm -hmm. we have to create environments. Those of us who are the leaders in our family, maybe leaders in mm -hmm. church, leaders in work, that we create an environment where the presence of God can be magnified, glorified, and manifest. This will cause people to worship. But I believe, I believe that God is calling us in these mm -hmm. last days to do this so vitally because the, he wants to bring the younger generation yeah, yeah. into yeah. a relationship with him. Look, you do not have to manufacture. You don't need Come video on. games Come and on. pizza That's parties. Right. You get young people exposed to the true That's manifest it. presence of God. They will not ever want to leave. And I believe that that's what God is calling us to in this day and age. Yeah, and I, I think about as you were talking, as we set up the landmarks or the way markers, they can see their way to that place yes, right. where the presence of God is and he moves and learn from us. Mm -hmm. This is where we ought to live. Yeah. This is where we ought to stay. Mm -hmm. And when they see us in that place all day long, being available to God all day long, That's right. every day, day just available and in his presence Amen. it is just a magnificent thing Amen. well you know the the enemy has targeted our children our yeah. young people yeah. and i think so god has targeted <laughs> them in this current revival he's pouring out his spirit on college campuses on youth groups on young people all over the nation and around the world and you and i need to say to the enemy you can't have our children. Yes. You can't have our grandchildren. Right. They are marked for the presence yes. of the Lord. Yes. 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 yes, Let's go on in verse 12. It says, then Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Mm -hmm. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way yes. that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, I love this. Here's was God's response. 
my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Somebody needs to hear that today. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And then Moses said, hey, Lord, if your presence doesn't go with me, I don't even want to go from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. Listen, the only thing that separates a believer from a non-believer, a Christian from a non-Christian, a saved person from someone that does not yet know Christ mm -hmm. is his presence. It's not that the world has troubles that we don't have. It's not that they go through things we don't have. It's his presence, number two, that distinguishes us and separates us out. Amen. And you know, if we would just get that mindset like Moses had, if your present doesn't go with us, God, then we're not going to go. We're not going to move. We're not going to advance. And the people around you will see that because if we're always uptight, if we're always anxious, if we always are living in fear, then maybe we need to reevaluate how much are we depending on God's presence in our lives to direct us and how much are we depending on our own flesh or on other people to direct us. We need to get back to that point where we say, God, I don't want to move. I don't want to take a step. I don't want to make a plan unless I first consulted you and you tell me, yes, this is the way to go. Walk in it. I want to hear God's voice speaking that clearly to me that I don't have to wonder, am I out of God's will? I want to know that I am in the will of God because I spent time in yep. his presence. I spent time yes, seeking yes, him, yes. being in his word, understanding what he has for my life, what he has for my family's life. It is so important in this day and age, in this world, that we are rooted and grounded and established in the word of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. so that we can grow, so that our families can grow, and so that we can be the light in this dark world, so that people will see us as a separate people and want what we have, because we are not here for our own selves. That's right. We are here for the purpose of God. And if people don't see the light of Jesus in us, then there's something wrong. We need to go back Amen. to the beginning, That's go right. back to the start, Pastor that, 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 That's how I start every day of my life. Good morning, Lord. If you don't go with me, yes. I'm not getting out of bed Amen. today. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, and the beauty of it to me, or part of the beauty, it's all, it's all yes. wonderful, but that he will go with us and we can change the atmosphere no matter where we go. Right. If God says go, and it might be something so general as a, a wedding, a wedding Come reception, a, a, a family gathering, no matter where it is, God's presence in us distinguishes us such that we can change the atmosphere yes, we can. and then God will give you the signal. Okay, now's the time to get out of there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, because we know when yes. stuff gets ready to go. Yeah. But God in us distinguishes us. Light and darkness, light and darkness. And if the world sees us doing everything they do, That's right. what's That's the difference? Right. There mm -hmm. is no difference and sometimes the enemy can, like you said about the flesh, can convince us, well, we don't want to be so different from, we want to blend yeah. in with, no, God distinguishes us. Yeah. And we can't be afraid to be distinguished, no, Pastor no, and I, John. I think there's a reality too, where, where sometimes when I've seen this in Christian circles, where we think that we have to be weird to be distinguished. Mm -hmm. And that's not <laughs> the case. Um, you know, I, I think that, that, that Jesus was very different and distinguished, but he wasn't weird. Now, blind seeing is weird, right? Walking on water is weird. Feeding 5,000 men plus women and children with five loaves and two fish, that's weird, but it's not strange. It's the type of thing that people say, I want to lean in, not fall back. And this, this reality, like you were saying, Pastor Myra, you have to come to a reality where you understand that you are carrying with you the presence of Almighty God. Right. I think of Jesus going to the fig yes. tree uh, during Passion Week, and, and the Bible says it was not the season for figs. Mm -hmm. But Jesus 
being the creator of the universe, there was an expectation that no matter what the season was, if Jesus was there, it was supposed to respond yeah. to his presence. <laughs> and so I challenge you, son or daughter of the Most High God, do, do circumstances, situations, and environments change when you're there because the presence of God is in Come you? On. Or do circumstances, situations, and climates change uh, you because the presence of God is lacking? And if, the, if it's the latter, on, I on. encourage you to set up that tent like we said in the first point and go out get away from the crowd get away from the clamor get away right. from everything and spend time in his presence speaking with him face to face yeah. as you would speak with a friend yes. that is the great privilege and honor that we have Amen. as his children because mm -hmm. he is the king and he has invited us into his presence Amen. that's good that's, that's really wonderful. good and you know sometimes because you are a carrier of his presence mm -hmm. there are other people that have a, a spirit that's not of God and they're going to clash mm -hmm. with you that's right. they may resist you right. they may cause problems in your life and you're mm -hmm. wondering wait a minute wait a minute mm -hmm. Lord mm -hmm. I thought you wanted to bless me today but listen when when when, when Jesus landed at Gadara and he put his foot out of the boat onto the land the demons yep. in the man started to act up. Yep. Yes. Immediately they started to tear him and throw him yep. and, and do all kind of crazy things. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I believe Satan knew Jesus had just landed and put his foot down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you show up at work wow. or you show up at a certain place, right. the enemy knows the presence of the Lord is exactly. in you. And it may get a reaction right. that can cause a clashing and a resistance that's not from God. That's mm. right. Well, it says in verse 17 of Exodus 33, So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And then he said, Please show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you and I will be gracious to whomever I will be gracious and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And that third point is, Lord, show us your glory. The glory is the weightiness of his presence. And if you and I, like Moses, will just ask the Lord for his glory and presence to come, I believe the Lord will not disappoint us. Amen. And you know, I think we were talking about that earlier, about just remaining and staying where God, God is so that we can get more of his glory, get more of his presence. I think about the many times that maybe you've experienced being around the altar at a church and having those prayer meetings and interceding and just asking for more of God. And how many times maybe your young people were in the pews or in the chairs of the church and they didn't come down and get in with you. I challenge you, if you are in a church service this weekend, get your children to go with you and pray. Maybe not at the altar. Maybe you can do it right where you're sitting in that mm -hmm. service, but get them to pray with you. Let them experience the presence of God, the glory of God in their lives. And young person, you that are watching, don't worry about the time clock. Mom and dad, don't worry about the time clock if your kids are down there praying and interceding with the Lord. Don't worry, I have to have dinner made. No, let them do that. Let them stay, let them dig in. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to do that because we want to see the glory of God in this earth. And I believe when that happens, lives are going to change. Those kids that may be not knowing the Lord right now, when they experience the presence and the glory and the power of God, they're not going to be able to resist it. And they're going to run after him. They're going to run after his presence. Those that are, are sick in their body, when they experience the glory and the presence of God and that weight, it will be so thick in their lives. And they're going to experience to the point they're going to be healed. They're going to be set free from every disease, every bondage, but we need the presence and the glory of God to be dwelling in our lives every day, not just at a church service, but every single day with us. Yeah, yeah. that intimacy yes. God wants with us 
to be intimate with him. Sometimes that word intimate can take people places right. flesh wise. Yes. But this is an intimacy where you have no holds barred. I think I got that right. Yeah. <laughs> no holds barred. You just let yourself go yeah. in the presence of God, being intimate with him. There is nothing shaded or nothing covered. You're open with him, being intimate. And we can have what Moses had. You said, right. well, my name is not Moses and I'm not leading <laughs> millions of people. And uh, listen, God put you in the body where it pleased him. Yes. And you need the intimacy of God. I think about that passage of scripture in 2 Corinthians 3. It says, as we behold, like in a glass or in a mirror, the glory of God, we're changed from glory to glory by the presence of God, by the spirit of God, God will show you his yeah. glory. God will show you who he is. Lord. And it is a magnificent thing. I don't use that word a whole mm. lot, magnificent. Yeah. But God will show you and it will be so transforming for you that you'll never want to go back to not being intimate with God. Yeah. yeah, and I think that that's one of the things like even even from, you know, the carnal or earthly sense, intimacy requires time. You've, you've got to, you know, I, I've got to, you know, show affection to my wife, you know, as, as the day goes on and, and, and show attention to her. And I think we live in a day and age where, where we don't want to show affection or attention to God. Mm -hmm. Um, and, mm -hmm. and I think that that's something that we've got to wrestle with. But there's also this reality between uh, total surrender and demand, right? Like God invites us into relationship and it has to be totally surrendered. It has to be not my will, but your will be done. But there's also like Moses says, Moses says, show me your glory. Like he placed a demand on God. And I believe that we have to learn to live within this tension, but it all starts with waiting. It all starts with time, right? Like, like. If you want the weight, you might have to wait. Mm -hmm. And God wants to put that weighty glory on us. But oh. I believe that God, the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, 9, the eyes of the Lord search mm -hmm. to and fro throughout the whole earth, mm -hmm. looking for someone whose heart is fully committed to him mm -hmm. so that he might give them strong support. And I believe right now God mm -hmm. is searching all yes. across the airwaves, the highways and the byways. He's looking for people here. He's looking for people that have established a tabernacle mm -hmm. who have said, I'm going to separate myself. I'm going to get away yes. from the noise. I yes. am going to submit and surrender my life because I need the weighty glory of God mm -hmm. in and on my life. And so I encourage you, whatever you do this week, whatever you do this evening, set up that tent, set aside time and wait on God, but also don't be afraid to place the demand upon him to show, up, show you his glory. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to invite you to go to the worship set. I just want to encourage you while Pastor Rebecca is leading us in a time, just get in his presence. Mm -hmm. Just pause, put aside the distractions right now. Mm -hmm. Just spend time as she ministers to us. Open up the heavens. For this day, we're gathered in your name. We're calling out to you. Your presence like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. Your love is we're here. Yes, you are. Your love is we're singing. Your glory on our face, we're looking to the skies. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. 
You're the reason we're here. Yes, you are. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heaven. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart and filling every part of our praise. Oh, if you have just tuned in, you are watching Move Your Mountain. And remember, if you need prayer for anything going on in your life, the number is there, 888-665-4483. We're going to conclude our time at the altar of God, the four of us in agreement, believing with you for your miracle. We've been talking today about how Moses went out to the tent, the tabernacle of meeting, and he met with God there, and how all the people rose in worship as they just sought the presence of the Lord. And I just want you to know that I pray that as you pursue God's presence and make his presence a priority in your life, and I believe that as you just go after God as a true worshiper, yeah. he, as he met with Moses and Joshua and the children of Israel, he will also meet with you. Yes. We want to thank so many of you. You not only called for prayer, but you called back to let us know how God answered prayer. And that so encourages us. Mm -hmm. uh, Betty called. She was diagnosed with cancer. She called the prayer line. And after she had, had already been to her doctor, she went back to her doctor. And the doctor said, there is no cancer. It is gone. She is praising God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh. Betty. That's amazing. Hallelujah. And for those of you that might still be wrestling or struggling with, with cancer yeah. or some disease or something in your loved one, you know what? Hear what God did for Betty and know that he can do it for yes. you. Amen. That's right. That's right. And then George called uh, from out of state. He had a friend, James, who, who, who was actually dying. The doctor said there was nothing more they could do for him. But George just called and was believing God for his friend. I love those four friends that laid, led the paralytic, laid him down, and the paralytic got healed because of the four friends' faith. And George said after he called the prayer line, 
his friend James suddenly sat up. It said, it said he surprised everybody in the hospital and now he's alive, he's well, and God did a miracle. If you are not excited right now after hearing these testimonies, you gotta, you gotta get a heart check. Praise the Lord. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the delivering business. Whatever you have need of, there's no limits to God. He can do it for them. He can do it for you today. That's right. Oh and uh, there, and Rona called. She also was healed of cancer. What a miracle. And uh, here, here's a, 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 a dear faithful partner says, I watch move your mountain all the time. I take communion with you and it just really, really encourages and ministers to me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're all in this together. Yes, we are. Distance does not separate us in the spirit. Amen. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And Pastor Gary, there is somebody watching right now. Your mountain has been that you don't feel worthy. Uh -huh. You don't feel worthy. You, 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 you're looking at the past of what was, but God said the blood of Jesus that we are going to remember as we take communion. The blood of Jesus took away all that past sin. And God is challenging you today to become more and more intimate with him. And as you become intimate with him, you will have boldness to yeah. say to that mountain, Jesus Christ giving his life made me worthy, not of yourself, but because of what God has done in you. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by his spirit that he has done these things. So as you move closer and closer to God, God is going to give you that boldness to speak it. He said, if we speak to the mountain with, with thanksgiving and, and no doubt that we can say to the mountain, be removed. Amen. And we, that's what we're here for, yes. to say to our mountains, to encourage you to say to your mountain, be removed, be removed, and it shall come to pass. Amen. And as we've been talking about the presence of the Lord, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, then you, you don't know him, have his presence. Mm -hmm. Because when you invite Jesus to come into your heart, that's how he comes in, by the Holy Spirit, by the presence of the Lord. And maybe you're dealing with that shame and unworthiness. Maybe you just... At some point, you were walking with God, but you've drifted away. You've fallen back. And mm -hmm. God's calling you in these hours to return to your first love again. There is no, nothing like the presence of the Lord in our lives. You know, and I, I believe there's some people watching and you're like, I'm cool. I'm, I'm good where I'm at. And I want to encourage you to take a look around and you may look around and see that, that everything is, is great. They, everything's hunky dory. You know, a lot of times I see people come uh, to Christ out of a moment of duress or distress. And so it was a, hey, save me for this moment thing, not save me so that I can be with you forever kind of a thing. But yeah. whatever's going on around you right now, I want to encourage you, don't wait for that moment of distress. You've heard about the presence of God, the goodness of the, the presence of the Lord. And I just want to, I believe right now you're hearing in your heart, it's time. It's time. It's not about whether or not you're good with where you are or aren't. It's about God has something better. And it's time. And so I just encourage you before we get ready to take uh, these elements, which symbolize the, the body that was broken for us, the blood that was shed for us, the very historical reality that our faith is centered around the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Before we take these elements, I just want to encourage you to just take a moment, say within your heart, God, I'm ready to surrender. I repent of my sins. I don't want them anymore. They aren't nearly as good as the goodness that you have in store for me. And so I leave those things behind and I turn to you right now. Jesus. I give my life to you. I surrender 
my all to you. And I ask you to help me to continue to follow you and serve you. And if you've believed that in your heart, that Jesus Christ is Lord, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, and you've confessed that, I want to encourage you right now to pick up the phone, call one of our prayer partners, 888-665-4483, and let them know, because the Bible says that we, with our heart we believe, but with our mouth we confess. And that means to confess to somebody else. So let someone know, let somebody know the greatest thing that's ever happened in your life has taken place right now as you've chosen to surrender your life to Jesus. And if you've done that, his presence now has come to take up residence within you. His presence is not a feeling, it's a fact, it's the truth. So just receive now in faith, by faith, the presence of the Holy Spirit abiding, abiding within you right now. Oh, it's so precious, so wonderful. And now as we take communion, you can do it because you have that relationship with Christ. The only thing that separates us from God is our sins. And as you've confessed and repented of your sins, now you're in right standing with our Lord. So would you pray over the, the bread for us and Pastor, over the cup. Father, we just thank you so much. And we, as we reflect on what you have done for us, God, when you went to Calvary, Lord, how your body was beaten for us, God. Even before you went to the cross, it was beaten, it was flogged, God. Blood was spilt even at that moment, God, before the cross. And Father, we thank you that with every stripe that you took on your back, you said that we have healing, God, spiritual healing, physical healing, emotional healing. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you bore every pain and all the suffering so that we do not have to. Lord, again, we thank you for the truth that as we confess our sins to you, as we give our lives to you, you immediately come into us and you transform us, God, and we also get to take on that fact that you are the healer and you are healing bodies right now. Father, we thank you for your body that was broken for us as we remember your goodness, Jesus. All right, take your, your cracker, your piece of bread, eat of it now and be healed and made whole in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for giving your only begotten son. And Jesus, we thank you for being willing to give your life. Life is in the blood and you gave your blood for us, for the remission of sin, the taking away of our sin. Yes. And we thank you for that. We thank you. It wasn't easy, but you did it for us. And so we remember today what you did for us on the cross. We thank you and we praise you for the blood. All right, take your cup and drink of it now and be washed and cleansed by the blood of the lamb. Now just receive healing virtue, just going through every part of your body. Wherever you need healing, just lay hands on yourself. And just be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right now, be healed. Pain goes. Sickness goes. That shame, that unworthiness, it goes in the name of Jesus Christ. Be set free from addictions yes. and fear. Every bondage is broken off of your life now in Jesus' precious name. Yes, yes, Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, Thank yes, you, Lord. Yes, yes, Thank yes. you, Lord. There's somebody who's watching right now. Yours has been an emotional disturbance in your history. And God is saying to you today, I sent my only son 
to bind up the brokenhearted, to set captives free. He was talking about you. Let him love you. Yes. Let him love you. You get out of the way and allow God to love you like nobody else can and watch what he does with those emotions. He'll set them in order. He'll set them in order. So many of us have experienced emotional things that have happened and thrown us off course, the course of life. But new life in Him, we can celebrate what Christ has done by setting us free. And He wants to do it for you. Amen. Amen. Well, Pat called from Carleton, Michigan. She was religious. She was in various churches and denominations, but she didn't have a relationship. She accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Savior and Lord. Yes, yes, yes. The best decision of your life that will ever happen is you choosing Jesus Christ. So welcome to the family. We love you and we're going to be praying for you. That's right. Well, we want to just remind you, if you are blessed by programs like Move Your Mountain, we have such a wonderful lineup of, of programs we produce right here in house. Our flagship program is Hope for Today. We have our Origins program, our Sister to Sister, today's Nashville Dashing Dish, of course, uh, Arlene's program at home. So, so many, but we cannot produce them or provide them to you without your prayers and financial support. We also have our lineup of national programs. I'm sure you have a favorite. I'm going to give you our address and I'm going to encourage you to pray about planting a seed into the good ground of Cornerstone Television. The address is CTVN Cornerstone Television, One Signal Hill Drive, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148-1499. And we're going to thank you in advance for your faithful and generous support. God bless you. As we go back to Pastor Rebecca, we're going to go over to the altar to close in prayer with you as she sings, Awake My Soul. of the Savior's road as he walks into the room where people pray where we hear praise as he hears faith hear us God oh hear the cries of your people Jesus there is a sound I love to hear it's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where he hears worship, he hears faith. Oh, yes, he does, yes, he does, he hears faith. Oh, oh, oh. oh Great. 
I believe God's waking his people up. He yes, sure is. Yes, and yes, I yes. pray that he does it in my life. I pray that he's doing it in your life as you are watching. I pray that today as we were talking about the glory of God, that you desire that and you dig in mm -hmm. over these next few days Come ahead. Because mm -hmm. God wants to move. He wants to intervene in your lives. Let him do it. Yes. Amen. yes. And th today's lesson just stirred up in me that, that we have power yes. with God. We have power in prayer. That's why we pray. You have power with God. When you are intimate with God, you have power. Moses prayed, God was going to destroy Israel. That's right. But Moses said, don't do it, God. They're going to say, God, Moses had God's best interest at heart. And when you have God's best interest at heart, God will hear you when you pray. You know, with, with, when it comes to presence, one of the things that I've noticed in my own life is that it's not something that I need to seek to go and get. I have to be aware that I already have it. What I need to do is get rid of some other things mm -hmm. in my life. The same way Moses separated himself. Right. I love that point. He separated himself and he prepared a place mm -hmm. so that he could maximize the manifestation of God's presence in his life. And so I encourage you to take some time and be mindful and reflective and say, what do I got to do? What do I got to eliminate right now? I, I think, I think uh, most people, it's not that you don't have enough. It's that you have too much and you just need to figure out what to eliminate yeah. so that you can maximize the one thing that you truly need. When Mary sought after Jesus in Luke 10, Jesus said, there's only one thing that's necessary. Mm -hmm. Mary's chosen it. It's the best portion and it won't be taken from that's her. Right. So true. Amen. Well, so, so many have yes. called for prayer. If you've called your requests are here on the yes. altar of the Lord. We're going to agree with you. If you haven't had a chance to call, as Pastor Meyer said earlier, there's no distance in the spirit. So just join with us right now. Many of you have written in and we're going to agree right yeah. now. Would Amen. you begin? Yes. Yeah. Thank Father, you. we just thank you for your word. We yes, thank you, Lord yes. Jesus, that we can stand on it knowing that it has full authority in our lives, Lord Jesus. And because of that, God, we come boldly to your throne room today and we ask, God, that every need that is represented on this altar today, that you would meet it, God. There are those that are calling in for salvation for their family members. Lord, there are those that are calling in for healings of their bodies, healings for others, God, they're calling in for. And God, I pray that the miracle worker, that you as the miracle worker, would step in, that you would intervene in every bad doctor's report, in every bad counselor's report, God, that says that the marriage is ended, that the family is never going to get back together. Lord, you step in as the one who has the final say. And Father, you give them the report of God. You give them your report, Lord Jesus. Lord, heal broken bodies, heal broken marriages, heal broken relationships, bring restoration, God, and give them back even greater than what they had before they were broken, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that your people will be blessed, God, that we would dig in, that we would desire more and more of you. And as your glory fills us, as your presence fills us, God, let less of this earth, less of our flesh ever be in our lives, God. Let us be totally and completely filled with you. Lord, do it now. Set revival across this nation in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you Praise that we can come to you boldly the throne of grace yes. to get whatever we need. And so we put these before you on the altar and we thank you for victory in each of these situations, all the circumstances. We ask you to be glorified in Jesus' name. Yes.
And Lord, we just pray right now, like, like wind through a musty home that has been shut up for a season, Lord God, that as your people open up their windows, that the wind of your Holy Spirit would just blow and bring times of refreshing through their lives, through their households and through their families. Just so many needs for family restoration right now, for family reconciliation, for family members who are far from you, from, for family members who are hurting and broken and in desperate need of your touch. Lord God, we beseech you today on behalf of these people to come and to touch and to move and to shift and to change circumstances right now. And we thank you for God. Yes. We thank yes. you right now because yes. you are the miracle working God. And we, yes. we, we surrender ourselves to you right now. Yes. And we place a son's demand upon a holy and gracious father to do what only you can do in Jesus name. Amen. And wherever you're watching today, just invite mm. and the Holy Spirit yes. into that room yes. where you are. One thing I love about the Lord, He goes where He's invited. Yes, he you know, before the Holy Spirit filled the 120, He filled the room where they yes. were sitting oh, in. Right. So let Him fill that room, that hospital room, that jail cell, yes. that nursing home room, your living yes. room yes. with His presence today yes, yes, yes. and just pursue get into church go after God because when you draw near to Jesus he will draw near to you when Laura called our 24 7 prayer line she had so much fear that she didn't want to leave her house she had lost her husband of 54 years just six months earlier Laura was flipping through TV stations when she came across Cornerstone Television. She felt compelled to call. One of our prayer partners talked, listened, and prayed with her for 45 minutes. At the end, Laura said how much the ministry had helped relieve her fear. Praise God for how He is using CTVN. When you give, you become part of what He is doing. This month, when you give, we'll send wild expectance as our way of saying thank you. This book will inspire you to live your life as God intended. To give and request your copy, visit us online at ctvn.org slash donate or call us at 888-665-4483. Hope 